The curvature of the Earth eludes us. Either the Earth is much larger in circumference than we are told, or the curve just doesn't exist. People assume that there is a curve, but it's never really been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Cameras with fisheye lenses, Hollywood movies, and NASA CGI are the closest we get to seeing curvature. The deception and the lies are just so pervasive and they're just so deep that I, I swear it gives me a headache. The surface of water is always level. This is just natural physics. We know this, that water, uh, if unobstructed and uncontained, will flow outwards, uh, finding it the easiest course to maintain its own level, right? So, um, but the Ball Earth model claims that the oceans are a huge hundred mile wall of curved water curving around the ball. That's ridiculous. They say that gravity makes it this possible, but you don't see that. You go right. to the beach, you see a completely flat horizon, you see water just ever so gently uh, coming up on the shore. So there's the pretty blue marble that NASA claims we are living on with circumference of 24,901 and 3959 radius. So to find the curvature, you take eight inches times your distance squared. That's eight inches times your distance squared, and if you don't square the distance, you end up with this, and this is not what NASA has shown us. They have given us a beautiful blue marble that we love. So, you get eight inches for one mile, 32 inches in two miles, 16.6 .6 feet with five miles, so on and so forth. So, what I did is I shot this pier, which is in Daytona Beach, Florida, and as you can see, between the water and the walkway of the pier is about 12 to 16 feet based on the height of the people and the railing. So I started at um, Granada, which is 4.92 miles away, and I shot this, and based on that distance and the formula, there should be 16 feet of curvature. But obviously, you can still see the entire gap under the, um, the walkway there between that and the water. So in addition to that, behind that pier is actually a lighthouse, which you can see uh, right above the pier, you can see the light. That is 16 miles away from my location. And I shot that lighthouse. Now that lighthouse is 175 feet tall, and the curvature from 16 miles away should be 170 feet you can clearly see about the entire lighthouse uh, beyond that pier. So like I said, there should be 170 feet of curvature, but there's none. And those hotels there are even further. Those are in New Smyrna, which is 20 miles away. If NASA is right, and there is, you know, we do live on a ball, they're gonna have to make up that curvature. If it's not in the 20 miles I'm shooting, well then that means it's gotta be made up further on down the line. So. You can't have it both ways. You can't say we live on this ball and then say, oh, you can't detect the curvature. Well, you got to detect it somewhere because if it's not dropping here, it's going to have to drop even more down the lines in order to make that circle, that ball they say we live on. And it's pretty round. That blue marble they give us is perfectly round. Lighthouses are one great example. The Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England, it's 180 feet high and can be seen up to 42 miles away, a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below the line of sight. Why can you still see it? Another one worth mentioning that people be familiar with is the Statue of Liberty. It stands 326 feet above sea level and on a clear day can be seen as far as 60 miles away. Now if the Earth was a globe at the dimensions that they give us, that would put Lady Liberty at an impossible 2,074 feet below the horizon. No, not one picture of the Earth. Imagine that. 2016, and we still don't have a picture of our home. Thousands of satellites supposedly orbiting the Earth. Why can't we get thousands of pictures? One shot with the whole Earth in it. Hell, we should have a channel on cable that shows the Earth rotating 24 hours a day, every day. Nope. Let's listen to NASA's very own Robert Simmons talk about how we get our fake pictures of Earth. 
1972, we saw our home in a new way. Apollo 17 astronauts snapped this picture. It gave people the first look at their home planet as a single entity. Last week, scientists at NASA released this. The shot is compiled from data from NASA's VIRS instrument, which orbits the Earth about every 100 minutes, taking measurements of light coming off the planet. That can be translated into ribbons of imagery like this, and then into one of these. And this is just the latest in NASA's Earth from Space album, which may be one of the most mind-expanding collections of images in human history. And then in 2002, Blue Marble 2.0. NASA's Rob Simmon made this. Simmon's job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit Command-Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. It, what I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. But I've looked at these images over and over again, trying to sort of get the essence of it. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm allergic to bullshit. Not having one authentic picture of the earth alone is a huge red flag. First off, let me ask you. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. 